Hey guys, thought I would just take a minute now that I've dropped the seats in place, they're not permanent yet, to do a quick video and kind of walk you through for those people that don't know and are watching this, what some of this is, what some of the symbology is, there's a lot of detail in here. And so I think this guy is really what started a lot of the theming. This tiki's just sort of you know, taken from a lot of different ones I've seen. I incorporated some stuff on my own. It's made out of uh, western red cedar, uh, about three or four layers of two inch thick cedar that were stacked on each other. And then I just spent a lot of time laying out a carving and carving it. And it's actually functional. It's part of the the uh, the breast hook or the triangular piece that fits up in the peak of the canoe that gives it all its support. You know, use some of the classic Polynesian motif of the spirals. Those are really big. You find that throughout all their art. Um, you can see it does have little eyes that are made from that same mica resin. So if you get right up on them, he kind of looks at you. You can see it. Uh, and you can see the grain in there. So I left a lot of it clear. I did do a lot of extensive airbrushing just to add depth. I do believe that color and contrast makes the wood pop out more rather than just an all wood solid canoe. Those are beautiful too, but I was looking for something a little different. These spears that form the gunnels, gunnels being this outside edge that's meant to take abuse, which I hope it never does. Uh, this is actually a Maori New Zealand war club and uh, it's kind of a traditional design taking off some museum pieces I saw online and I won't go into too much depth or detail but basically this would be like more or less a six foot spear and we'll go down and look at the bottom side of it or the back end of it and uh, you'll get a better idea about how it's carved on the end. This is this spiral is kind of the big motif out of Moana. And talking about just the the fabric, because since we're up here, this is the first look. Fabric came out of Hawaii, Honolulu, June's Fabrics, got it off of Etsy. Um, all of the bamboo that you see in here is actually sapili, cut, carved, shaped, airbrushed to mimic uh, charred bamboo. The longer rails that you see through here and if i get down you can see that they actually have scuppers or gaps in between those are uh, rails that are made of laminated uh, pieces of uh, sapili and these little places here just to give the illusion of being a node in bamboo you see that a lot and they'll toast this bamboo a lot of times. It'll take this color on. I thought it was real pretty. But bamboo's pretty fragile. It, it rots easily. It's just a grass. So I wanted something that lasts. So I had gone through the thought of, well, let's use bamboo. And then the more I read, the less I liked it. Thought about impregnating it with epoxy to preserve it. Didn't think it was really going to work. So in the end, uh, everything that you see, this bamboo, it just ended up being carved sapili. The actual hull itself, all of the blondish look, that wood that you see here, I bought from a guy that was a boat builder uh, that had retired out of St. Augustine. And this is all uh, Atlantic white cedar. They call it juniper down here. These are just carved uh, backrests. Um, did a basket weave pattern. I know the mats, basket weave mats are a big part of their culture in the Pacific. So uh, use that motif or that texture. Same up here. Just done with the chisel. So this is just molded in. It's got a little bit of a bend. Uh, hibiscus is sort of mirrored from the fabric. A lot of the shapes that are behind there and accented with a little bit of uh, airbrushing is also found throughout this fabric. And of course these benches are in here. My dad had the idea of running a long bench. It really sprung out of this bench being something where my two granddaughters could sit front and back if they wanted to and lean up and face each other. This was actually just going to be a, 
a hatch. I still have the hatch over in the corner where it was cut out of this. And uh, the more we looked at it, my daughter was out here. We kind of played around. I wanted to incorporate these hooks, which are also sapili. I wanted to incorporate these hooks in it. And uh, these are Maui's hooks from Moana. Tried to recreate all the carving that you see. It's just carved, not painted or anything like that. So you can see it actually has some depth to it. The Muli and Mua are little sister, big sister in Hawaii. According to Google, I hope it's right. This is again Sapili, just carved backrest. And all of this is functional. All of these have to have combings. They strengthen the opening of the cockpit itself, but at the same time, um, and provide some water deflection if water rushes up on deck from the splash. This is an unusual cockpit opening the way it's formed. Also, since it's a, a Disney movie and Disney inspired, that's everybody knows it's been to Disney to look out for all the hidden Mickeys and there's one right there. So there's his ears and his head. This guy is actually from the Tiki Room. The Enchanted Tiki Room. He's one of the drummers at the end of the uh, of the show that's beating the drums. You can see him up above you if you ever go to Disney World and walk. This is a uh, door panel from Trader Joe's. An actual door panel um, that I replicated. It's not the door panel, but it's one that I took off of what they have at Trader Joe's on the door and thought it would make a nice deck. So we'll take a closer look at this guy. That's Maui. You'll see that same symbol all over the place at the uh, Polynesian Lodge, Walt Disney World. A Western Red Cedar sculpture carving that was first made to adhere and closely follow the stern shape of this canoe. And what this is, is it's the manta ray from the grandmother's back in, uh, in Moana. She had a large tattoo across her back, of course, turned into a manta ray. We love the movie. So this symbology that was in there was pretty cool to us and we wanted to incorporate it. I wanted to make sure that it found its way in here somehow. So this was just a series of pieces laminated together, shaped on the inside to fit the existing hull shape, and then carved on the outside to, uh, to look like a manta ray. That's the mouth part here, as you can see. There you can see the carbon fiber kind of showing. But it had a practical purpose. I wanted to make sure that these were reinforced and as strong as I could get them. As I figure at some point they'll they'll get hit. We're not careful. Yeah, this canoe itself was never meant to have a deck. It was always just an open canoe. And it wasn't as wide as it is. I took this thing, um, put it in CAD, created a model, made it 20%, I think 19% exactly wider. So take care and we'll post something up soon and talk to you later. Bye.